Okay, so for our cervical spine palpation, we're gonna start um, from the posterior aspect, and we've got Karina in a prone position. You can do this in supine as well, but just for the purposes of the video, we're gonna do it in prone. First uh, point we're going to come to is your occipital protuberance, which essentially is the uh, midline of the skull. It's the bony prominence that you'll feel in the posterior aspect of the skull just before it reaches the cervical spine. And then what you do is slide off the uh, occiput cordially um, and to, into the dip um, where you won't feel anything. And then the first bony prominence you get to centrally will be your spinous process of C2. You then move from C2 down the spine, palpating the spinous process of C3, 4 and 5. And these can be difficult to palpate sometimes, so uh, what you can do is have the patient in a supine position and to get them to flex the head and then you can feel that a little bit more easily. C6 and 7 would be the lowest, most prominent um, cervical vertebra. And if you get the patient to extend their head, what you'll feel is a reduction of C6, so it, C6 will disappear and C7 seven will remain prominent, which is how you can differentiate between the two. You can feel between the segments of the spine as they flex and extend just to check mobility, so just between those spines process in a flexion extension position. Next thing we would do is palpate the facets, which are about 1.3 to 2.5 centimeters lateral to the spinous processes. And you feel this from your um, occipital protuberance going across to um, C2 and then going down. The other thing you can palpate in this area as well is your muscles around the, the spine. So the paraspinal muscles um, moving up into the suboccipital structures, so suboccipital muscles which are just, again, underneath that occipital protuberance and lateral to that occipital protuberance. What you can also do in this position is come down onto the levator scapula, which basically is you go to the superior medial border of scap, and then you'd roll off this um, slightly medially um, and feel for that insertion of the levator scap muscle, which can be often affected with your cervical spine issues. And then the other thing you can do is go more um, superiorly to that, um, above the spine of scapula and go into the um, soft tissues there where there'll be the upper fibres of trapezius um, where you can check for tenderness. Um, with all of these things we're checking and looking at the same time for tenderness, redness, um, swelling, the deformity, anything of that nature as we're going through our palpation. And then after this we'll move on to our lateral structures. Okay, so laterally, we're going to come on to the mastoid process, which is um, just posterior to the earlobe, um, just before the dip. Um, and then we're going to go from here onto our transverse process of the cervical spine, which is just inferior and anterior. You'll feel a hard lump from the mastoid process, and that's the start of the C spine, C1. You would then move cordially for the other transverse processes of the cervical spine following a lordotic path of the cervical spine rather than anteriorly, sorry, rather than directly inferiorly, just because of the lordosis of the cervical spine. The other thing you can palpate for is the lymph nodes. If they're swollen, they'll lie along the um, line of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And the other thing in this region would be the carotid artery, which is the mid portion of the neck between the sternocleidomastoid and the trachea. Um, me and Glenn were just talking, and particularly with people with high blood pressure, this would be important to do. And potentially, if you were going to be considering cervical manipulations, another good one to do to rule out um, any cardiovascular disease in that patient. Then you'd also come on to the TMJ, which is just anterior to the external ear, and you'd palpate that directly over the joint. Um, this is at the angle of the mandible, and that's level with C2. Your parotid gland is not palpable over the angle of the mandible, but if swollen, will also be a bit boggy and soft when you palpate in this region. So from an anterior aspect, we'd come onto the hyoid bone, which is the superior part of the trachea. And then if we move laterally to that, would just, the adjacent would be the thyroid gland. After this, we're gonna come across and down um, to the chromioclavicular joint on the outside of the shoulder and just come into the supraclavicular fossa. So basically between the, the clavicle or superior to the clavicle and we would palpate the soft tissue structures through here. Coming across we would come into the, ster sterno, uh, the 
sternocleidomastoid muscle and palpating the soft tissues through here. Then we're going to come across to our first rib from the manubrium sternum. So we're going to palpate down to the bony prominence at the front of the sternum, the manubrium sternum. And then we're going to come out laterally onto the first rib, which will be the first rib that you feel from the manubrium sternum. And then we will palpate downwards to the second and the third ribs. One thing you can do with this, these sorts of tests is get the patient to palpate, to breathe, sorry, uh, or take a deep breath in and out um, while comparing the expansion or the movement of the ribs to check the mobility and we would check this on both sides.